Hey guys, this is Haley from the Mountain View Cottage. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this farmhouse inspired wainscoting in our formal living room. My husband and I have lived in our house about four years and it is a very simple, cookie cutter, builder grade home. So we have taken it upon ourselves to inject a little more character and style into our home and one of the ways that we have done that is through DIY projects. This wainscoting tutorial is a great way to add character to your home and add a little more farmhouse style while you're at it. Keep on watching and I will show you step by step how to create this in your own home. First step is our supply list. I would go ahead and just pause this video right now and take a screenshot of your supply list, but I'm gonna go through it with you just a little bit. You're gonna need to get some pre-painted MDF boards from your local hardware store. You're gonna need two and a half inch by eight foot boards, one inch by eight foot boards, and eight inch by eight foot boards. The two and a half inch boards are gonna make up almost the entire wainscoting. The one inch boards are gonna cap off the top, and the eight inch boards are going to be your base boards. On the next slide, I will go over all the calculations that you'll need to do in order to know exactly how many boards of each size you need for your particular room and your project. You'll also need a tape measure, stud finder, a small foam paint roller, standard paint roller, paintbrush, white paint, wall paint, painter's tape, paint drop cloth, a nail gun, one and a fourth inch nail brads for your nail gun, liquid nails and caulking, you'll need multiple bottles of each, wood putty, chop saw, crowbar, exacto knife or a box cutter, and a ladder or a step stool. Let's talk calculations. So I've made this little diagram over here that's purple, blue, and orange so you can kind of get an idea of what pieces I'm talking about when we're talking about how you measure and calculate how many pieces of MDF that you're gonna need. All of these pieces here shown in the diagram are two and a half inch boards. Basically to figure out the measurement of how many um, eight foot pieces of the baseboard you'll need is you'll just measure your entire room. You'll do the same thing for the one inch pieces because they're gonna go around the entire room too. And then you're also gonna have another two and a half inch piece that goes on the top of the wainscoting, which is the orange piece here. And to get that calculation, you just measure around your entire room. So those three calculations will all be the same and you will buy your wood according to those measurements. Now you're gonna also need to buy some more of the two and a half inch boards to create your wainscoting boxes. So my boxes measure from one purple end to the other purple end, 14 and a half inches. And then the little middle piece is nine and a half inches. So basically you need to just measure your wall and see how many 14 and a half inch boxes will fit on your wall. Mine are 49 inches tall, which will also be important when you go and do your measurements because on an eight foot board, you can only cut one 49 inch purple piece per board. So with those little leftovers, you can then go in and cut all the blue pieces, which are nine and a half inches. So that is basically how you're gonna get all your calculations. Go ahead and screenshot this little supply list calculations page also. It just chronicles everything I just said. So when you're going to the store and you're trying to figure out all your calculations, you have it right in front of you. Make sure that you measure your room and golden rule, measure twice, cut once. The boring stuff is out of the way and we can move on to the fun stuff. So right now I'm just ripping out all of my existing baseboards. First, you're gonna take your X-Acto knife or your um, box cutter and you're going to score all along the top and the bottom of your baseboard where it meets the wall and where it meets the flooring so that as you're ripping it out, it doesn't pull up your flooring and it doesn't pull off the paint. Then once you have those all out, go back with your nail or your hammer and just pull out all the little extra nails that were stubborn and come up with it. And before you move on to the next step, you're gonna wanna vacuum and dust out or sweep any of the debris that was left over so that when you're putting your new baseboards up, it doesn't have gunk behind it and it will go on flush with your wall. Now that all your existing baseboards are off, go ahead and take your eight inch by eight foot MDF boards and apply some liquid nail all along the back of it and use the stud finder to nail it into the studs on the wall. Once you have your baseboards in, you can go ahead and start on your wainscoting. I'm gonna take one of the two and a half inch MDF boards that I have cut down to 49 inches. I'm gonna rest it right on the baseboard and I have applied liquid nail all along the back of it. That was just not in the video. And I'm using my nail gun to go ahead and adhere it to the wall. 
make sure you also use your level to go ahead and make sure that it is straight because chances are your walls are not straight. I have learned from experience. As you can see here, I've added two more pieces since we put the very first two and a half inch slat on. I'm going in and making sure that it's level. That little nine and a half inch piece in the middle measures 39 inches from the very top of the baseboard to the very top of that little two and a half inch piece. Something you can do to make this really simple as you go along the whole wall is calculate that 39 inches from the very one end of your wall to the very other end of your wall using your level as you go so that you know that it's perfectly straight and use a pencil to mark along the entire wall. That way when you go to put that nine and a half inch piece on all of your boxes that line is ready and you know it's perfectly straight and you don't get a different measurement if you're remeasuring every single time for every individual box. Once you have that little nine and a half inch piece there go ahead and add your 49 inch piece to the other side of it and Make sure you're using liquid nail all along the back of this because you won't have the studs to nail all of these in. And then you're gonna go ahead and use your nail gun to nail them in for extra security. So I have now sped it up and we have progressed quite a bit on the wall. You're just gonna keep moving along. You'll add one 49 inch slat and then you'll put a nine and a half inch piece in the middle of it using that line that you've penciled across your entire wall as you go and then you'll add another 49 inch slat. It's pretty simple. If you get to the end of your wall and you have a little extra space or it's a little bit shorter, um, just measure that nine and a half inch piece and make it longer or shorter according to the wall length that is left. These little imperfections will be totally fine as long as you've measured right to begin with and they will go unnoticeable and your entire wall will be filled with wainscoting. Side note, we have a big huge hole in our wall because we are also adding a closet underneath our stairs. As you can see, it's now nighttime. All my cute little kids are asleep and I'm gonna keep on working on this project and I have moved on to another wall. As you can see, there's some crazy stuff going on in this wall too. We had a doggy door that we decided to fill in and close up. And so I'm just gonna really speed up this process again for you so that you can see how this happens really quickly if only it worked this way in real life. So now I'm gonna go on to capping off the top. So I'm just gonna take a two and a half inch piece of MDF and I'm going to rest it on the very tops of each of the boxes. Make sure that it's level and use some liquid nail to go ahead and adhere it to the wall. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take one of those one inch pieces. I'm gonna add liquid nail all along the very top of that two inch piece that we have securely fastened to the wall with our nail gun and the liquid nails. And I'm gonna put it on its side. So it's gonna lay sideways um, on the top of that two and a half inch piece. So it's gonna stick out further than the rest of all of the MDF that we've previously put on. And so it's just a nice cap off to finish up the project. So once I've added the liquid nails and I made sure that it's nice and straight, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my nail gun to secure it into that two and a half inch MDF piece below it. Day two of our project and I am on to caulking. So I'm just using some caulking. You can find it at any local hardware store. I actually got mine at Walmart. It's like a dollar um, per canister and it is made specifically for molding. So you wanna make sure that you get the right kind because other kinds will crack and they will not look right. So I have it in the caulking gun and I am just um, adding small beads of it along the inside edges of all the boxes for the wainscoting. And I'm also gonna use it to caulk all the um, joint pieces where they meet each other so that it's nice and flat and it looks like a one seamless piece. So as you caulk, you're just going to add the beads of caulk using the caulk gun. And then I found the easiest way is to just use my finger to go ahead and 
swipe out the excess caulk and make it nice and smooth. I have a bucket that I'm using to just um, discard the excess caulk into, which I found was the easiest method. And I didn't have any gloves, but I would strongly recommend using gloves because this product is super sticky and it'll make your hands a complete mess. But if you don't have any, as you can see, you can do it without it. Here is a close-up of that same process. You can also use a rag to kind of help you wipe out the excess and make sure that it's nice and smooth and all the edges are nice and finished. Don't forget to fill in all of the nail holes that you made with your nail gun. I do not like to use the caulking that you're using for all the molding for this and just prefer to use regular wall putty. Next up is painting. I went ahead and used a six inch foam roller to go ahead and paint all of my wainscoting. It was the easiest way to apply the paint to the wainscoting since there's so many little crevices and it was a very smooth application. So you may need to use a paintbrush for some of the corners, but I basically use this foam roller for the entire thing. If you choose to use white paint like I have, something that will really cut down on the time that it takes to paint is by using a primer underneath your white paint. So I didn't do it on this wall and I paid dearly. I had to paint at least eight coats to get it all the way opaque to the way I wanted it. And on the opposite wall, I went ahead and used a primer that had a yellow base and it went on way faster. I only had to do about two coats versus eight. So something to keep in mind if you're using a very light color. It really does pay to use better paint in the long run. You'll use less paint, you'll waste less time painting coat after coat after coat. So think about that when you're purchasing your paint. You also wanna go through and make sure you have wiped down your entire wainscoting before you begin to paint because you do not wanna get little particles in your paint that make it all gunky underneath. So wipe it down with a damp rag and you should be good to go. And make sure that you're using a paint that has a good sheen to it. So something like a semi-gloss so that when you are all finished painting, it is super easy to wipe down and keep dust free um, for easy upkeep. And here it is in all its glory complete. I'm so excited with the way it turned out. It adds so much farmhouse style to my home, which was exactly what I was going for. As you can see, it was a pretty simple project. It took some time. A couple of the steps are a little bit tedious, but they are not hard. They just take a little bit of elbow grease. I hope you found this tutorial inspirational and it gets you excited to go ahead and tackle some projects just like this in your own house. And as always, please subscribe to my channel for more farmhouse inspired tutorials just like this one. And head over to my blog for more projects at themountviewcottage.net. Thank you so much.